So, Marco, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Um, well, you are musically an active person. You're a Nightwish, um, you have Tarot as your own band, and mm -hmm. you do some um, guest projects sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> how do you balance out music against uh, personal life then? Well, since uh, you don't shy away from all those projects. <laughs> I do my best. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's a lot to do, but actually I do take uh, good care of so things so that I also have time to, you know, just, take, just to wind down, forget all about music business and all, all about band playing and all that and, and also stay at, just stay at home and take care of, you know, washing the laundry or whatever. <laughs> it's a good counterweight of being an, you know, what, international rock star. <laughs> <laughs> And mm. how do you wind down then from, from no. At home, I, well, I do some, you know, physical exercises in order to get in, to stay in shape. Read a lot of books, watch some nice movies, and do occasional thing like, yeah. for instance, go cross-country skiing with, you, with my kids, these kind of things. And do your kids, do they listen to your music? No, and then, yeah, I mean, it's, well, if you, Basically, being a family father is to be taken for granted. Your kids have always had you. Yeah, even though I'm sometimes away, then I, when I'm there, I'm just a dad. So, um, so I kind of lost the thread. Now, ask so me again. So, do they do they spin um, a Nightwish albums, Tarot albums at ah, home? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest, I don't know. The guys have become quite, you know self-reliant on what they listen and all that but I'm mostly I'm satisfied that they do listen to real bands and with real guitars on top of it and all that so so yeah so what uh, are that, that, that is a good that is a good thing and most of it is pretty hard and alternative and all that which I'm which I'm pleased about <laughs> if the kids are listening to that and I do know that they've had some of the favorites from like previous Nightwish songs and all that but I, well, I haven't had that much of an opportunity yet to play the like the finished album at home. I guess we're getting some out of the print soon. <laughs> and do they visit shows? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. In, in Finland, I guess. And yeah, mainly. I mean, my boys, they're getting old enough soon that um, I suppose I should, when, there's a, when they don't have school or something like that, I should bring them over to some places. And are they musically active, like playing instruments? Or uh, my other boy, he's a he's becoming a quite a quite a handy drummer. Oh, okay, <laughs> so maybe one day you'll have a project, or is that too far in the future? <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Of course, that would be safe. I know quite a lot of pitfalls in the musician's career, which I could be able to watch out a little bit for. Um, like? Well, there are quite a lot of plenty of people in this business who are. Mixed up with certain, you know, mind-altering substances and whatever, which I would rather, rather keep my kids away from. Of course. Um, then, what keeps you inspired to continue with, well, a lot of projects and my wish? It all depends on music. I mean, with Nightwish, with Tarot Boys, I found that the stuff what we, that we've been doing together is ambitious, interesting, has a lot of depth and layers to it. And I, I like to do music where no record company or anybody has, can actually tell you what to do. You don't have to cater to any rules of mainstream. That's a big thing. And then occasionally, you know, visits and guest appearances that I've done for instance, in Arjen Lukasen's Arian, is because, well, I've found his music to be pretty much on par with these ideas that I have also. Music done because of the music, not because of your bank account demands it. Um, I respect that. So I, so I do occasional these things. Also with, for instance, yeah, again, your fellow countrymen, Delane, been being friends with Martin for quite a while and so have been ending up on his albums to do things now and then. 
Okay. And, and, and the music, again, is something that I respect. He writes good stuff. And for uh, well, the previous night, this album, Imaginarium, you had mm. a movie and all of that, and now you're just back to songs. How did it feel? Relieved. Relieved? <laughs> yeah, relieving. I mean, the music business is a thousand times even more chaotic than what, what music business is. So it was an interesting sidestep to make that kind of a project happen and get it, get it done, make through it. But yeah, it's, it took so much energy that we better stick to our guns and stay with just the music for a while. Then what, um, in what way did it t take so much energy from you? Well, it's a lot of traveling, a lot of hassle, fundraising, uh, contracts, papers, people, all kinds of details, a lot of people from different countries you got to deal with emails and phone calls and yeah, it's a hell of a hassle. So is music business, but like I said, movie business is way, 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 way more chaotic even. Okay. Um, you wrote, uh, uh, co-wrote some songs on the album. Mm -hmm. um, the lyrics on Yours is an Empty Hope? Uh, yeah, there's a few lines from me. I mean, that was a time when I went over to Thomas's place, like a, quite exactly a year ago. I had done my home studio demos about stuff I had written and went over to his, to his place to bring him the CD and listen to what he had been writing. And, and then um, when I'm with those things that I recorded, I just kind of ended up writing some, you know, quick lyrics in order to sing over them so you can hear better what the song sounds like. And when you start to write things, you actually oftentimes, even if you start from a little thing, you end up writing for real. There were a few lines that Tom picked on that he had been trying to find a way about sort of saying these kind of saying things using the same kind of metaphors and all that. And he was asking that, could these be actually used? And I was like, hey, it's been your turf. If you think it's good enough, then go ahead. Let's put them in. Because at least my point of view with Nightwish is that Thomas's way of writing music and lyrics has been a pretty big thing for the band's success. So, but if he think, and that's the way I always give him the music as well. If it goes through his filter and it will end up on the album, it's good. Um, same thing again with these few lines of lyrics. And they seem to work for him, so okay. And if you look back at the text you wrote and you brought there, and at, at the text it is now, is it still similar? Mm, yeah, quite a few of them structures and ideas are there just the way I, was, I had written. A couple, of, a couple of words might have changed. Uh, but what was the idea behind it then? It's pretty much about life as it is here now and how much you should take it in as it is and not just cower away trying to save yourself for something. Yeah, it's, it's more the whole lyrical idea which I had was live in the here and now, Okay. not then. And weak fantasy was also... Yeah. Um, a big part was yours? Yeah, there's a, quite a lot of music from me and uh, this one C part of lyrics which was written by me, by me. Also, actually, after we already had recorded almost all of the song because it just felt that there was a big, big instrumental part which didn't have a lyrical content or anything like that and we started to feel that it might be a bit too much. So, a quick check over how the band is playing and what kind of melody would fit and try out a few lyrics and then I wrote them down and tried them out and, and again Troy checked them out as a native English speaker good Thomas checked them out as a suitable for the whole song story and yeah let's put them in and what is the song about I mean I have some conclusions of course but oh you mean weak fantasy yes well as a it has to deal with, uh, you know, restrictive by the book religion. Mm -hmm. Not any one of them, but, uh, but uh, whatever is, uh, there are religious, religious extreme regimes and sects and all that, which can be actually really oppressive and restricting to the people just because, well, and I see it as a pyramid scam. Take your money from the poor and weak and let the ones on top grow fat. Uh, well, the 
the album has um, well pretty big theme in mm. terms of origin of life and meaning of life and you of course you have you have some lines that you sing mm -hmm. so um, in in what way did did you read them and stop to think about it for well, yeah of course I mean in order to have a right conviction and the vibe to the vocals that you do you do have to understand what you're singing about at least to my opinion um, and you get got to be able to relate and these both scientific or philosophical values that the lyrics might have I try to get into them and um, in order to be convincing in order to put my personality and the con my own convictions into them and these things that Thomas were writing about and then I helped with a few <laughs> lines here and there um, they're all on pretty much on par of what I think and feel about life, universe, er, and everything. Uh, yeah, that's a quote as well. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> life, universe, and everything. Hi to Mr. Douglas Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Should have called the album 42. Yeah, um. it could be. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I do get into the lyrics and of course, well, now we've been doing stuff together with Thomas and the band for quite a long while, so it doesn't really take that much from me, take, take that much thinking from me to kind of see what he's about. Yes, but did it also make, um, I guess, question your, your views or uh, discuss it with the others? Yeah, of course we do. I mean, uh, especially at the summertime, during, during the summer camp, we had a lot of evenings sitting around the campfire, warming up the sauna and talking about different things. And Thomas was also that the, there are things that might, you know, everybody should be able to listen and read these things in order to, if they feel that something is contradictory to, to their views of life. But I, I have no problem with any of that stuff because I'm, I'm, I'm being a, quite a big science freak myself ever since I was a kid and if Thomas had, Thomas had this maritime biologist dream at first before becoming an internationally known keyboard player I, I as a kid I had this you know dream to become an astronaut or astronomist or uh, because I was into the into the planets and the universe and also started to read a, quite a lot of sci-fi uh, at a pretty young age. So, uh, yeah, I have these views about things also which, which are pretty much on the par of what is there written as well.